Hi, everyone. This is Jared Snyder. I'm a partner and senior advisor at Exential Wealth Advisors and just wanted to share a few thoughts with you as it relates to some uh, business opportunities uh, related to the CARES Act that just passed Congress this past week. So the $2 trillion package uh, includes a lot of provisions for small businesses, and we wanted to share some insight with you, with you as a business owner into how that might help you. So First and foremost, with respect to the small business provisions, there are three key components that are available to you through the CARES Act. Those are loans, uh, payroll retention credits, and payroll tax deferments. Uh, in addition to those three things, I'll share a few thoughts with you on unemployment benefits as it relates to business owners, kind of towards the end of our discussion today. So we'll start off with, the, with talking through the loans, as that's the, the real meat so to speak, uh, of the provisions available to you through, uh, through this law. So I'm gonna share my screen here and, and pull everything up so that you're able to review this here with me. So the 2020 CARES Act, uh, our highlights here, you know, it's the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act is the, the name of the law. Uh, when we look at our small business loans, there are two different types of loans that are available to you. Economic injury disaster loans and paycheck protection program loans. So two completely different loans. Which loan might be right for your business? So on the EIDL side, um, if your non-payroll expenses typically outweigh your, your payroll expenses. You know, if we, uh, if we have typical employee compensation that's over $100,000, if you're looking at uh, how you're going to, uh, to come out of this economic downturn, if you think it's going to be a longer recovery time, um, and if you know that kind of going into this, you're already going to have to significantly reduce your employment levels, kind of regardless of what loan assistance is available, then an economic injury disaster loan might be right for you. Under uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, you know, that might make sense for you if payroll expenses uh, make up the majority of your operating expenses. Um, if, uh, if your typical employee compensation is under $100,000 uh, and you need those employees to be able to bounce back uh, in, in the recovery, and if you're looking at a shorter recovery outlook, that's where the, the PPP loan might make sense for you. So uh, as you're thinking about which one to apply for, keep those things in mind. Um, what can we use the loans for? On the EIDL side, you can use those loans for you know, your financial obligations, your operating expenses that, would you, uh, that you would have had and that you would have been able to cover, uh, but for this, uh, this coronavirus event. On the PPP side, uh, the permitted costs are a little bit more limited. So it's really limited to employee salaries, commissions, other compensation, uh, your rent expenses, your utility expenses, um, interest on uh, on debt obligations like interest on your mortgage, and then you know health insurance costs associated uh, with those employees. So that's it's really you know the name kind of gives it away. It's uh, the the leading thing here is retaining uh, personnel and and covering those costs. So that, that's what we can use the loans for. Uh, in terms of who can apply, it's really small businesses under 500 employees that are by and large eligible on the EIDL side. Uh, on the Paycheck Protection Program side, also under 500 uh, employees, businesses and entities that have been in operation uh, since uh, February 15th of 2020 or were in operation at that point. Um, there are a few exceptions that you can kind of note there, but by and large, that's who we're dealing with. Really small businesses, you kind of know who you are, under 500 employees. And on the PPP side, you were in operation on February 15th of this year. Um, just a couple other notes on, on high level things. The, the lender on the EIDL side is the SBA. So you go directly to the SBA for that loan. On the PPP side, a local bank um, or you know, a bank that does the SBA 7A uh, loans would be able to facilitate uh, the, the Paycheck Protection Program loans for you. Those loans are underwritten by the SBA. Um, you can see here who can apply. Again, we've kind of already covered who's able to apply for the loans and then some rules around affiliations on, on affiliated businesses. But basically, if you're under 500 employees, uh, you, you probably meet the requirement for, for one or both loans. Uh, the maximum amount of the loan is pretty different between these two, uh, two loan opportunities. So on the EIDL side, the max loan amount is $2 million. 
Um, whenever you apply for an EIDL loan, you can request uh, $10,000 as an advance. You have to actually apply for the loan to get that $10,000 advance. Um, you know, if you get the advance and then for whatever reason uh, you don't actually get the loan, you're not required to repay that $10,000 advance. Um, the advance is distributed within three days, so it is a quick way to get an infusion of cash if, if that's meaningful for you. Uh, bear that in mind. The maximum loan amount on the paycheck protection program size or side of things is, is a little bit different. Uh, it looks at your, uh, the maximum amount of the loan is it's equal to two and a half times your average monthly payroll costs looking back to February 15th of 2019 to June 30th of 2019. If you've got seasonal workers, you can use March 1st as the start date for that. But it's the lesser of that two and a half times monthly, average monthly payroll cost or $10 million, whichever is smaller. Um, if you were not in business February 15th to June 30th of 2019, um, then you can see here the max loan amount is equal to two and a half times your average monthly payroll cost June 1st of this year through February 29th of this year. In terms of uh, you know, additional information on maximum loan amount, uh, when we're looking at payroll, what does payroll include? You can see notes here on, on, uh, on overall compensation. Uh, that includes salary, wage, commission, uh, cash tips, uh, those, those types of items, uh, sick leave, medical leave, parental family leave, vacation, um, you know, retirement benefits, state and local taxes that are assessed on the compensation of the employee is included in payroll. Notably, things that are excluded from payroll or employer owner compensation in excess of $100,000. So it's really just uh, focused in on those employees that are comped under $100,000. Keep that in mind in terms of your, your maximum loan amount. So when we're looking at the, the loan terms on the, the interest rates on the loans, very attractive rates on these loans, very attractive terms relative to what you could get in any other environment. So on the EIDL side, we're looking at 3.75% on businesses, 2.75% for nonprofits. On the paycheck protection side, uh, the, the interest rate is 0.50% or half a percent is your loan rate. Uh, the EIDL loan terms can be up to 30 years, so you have a much longer uh, amortization schedule there for repayment. On the Paycheck Protection Program side of things, it's a two-year repayment. Uh, one of the other benefits on the, on the PPP loan that we'll talk about is the forgivable nature of that loan. Um, so while it has a very short loan term, there's a high likelihood that a good portion of your loan could actually be forgivable to where you're not actually having to repay that loan. Um, on, on the due dates on these loans, the due date for the EIDL loan, one year after uh, the loan origination date is when the first loan payment is due. Your interest does accrue during that time period. On the PPP side, you know, at least six months after the loan origination date, but you're also having those interest expenses accrue. Um, there, there's no loan forgiveness under EIDL. There is loan forgiveness under the Paycheck Protection Program. It's calculated as the amount spent on those permitted costs. Uh, you know, by you as the borrower during the eight week period after that origination date of the loan. So the, the forgivable nature of the PPP loan can make it really, really attractive. Uh, there's no collateral required on the PPP side. There is uh, a loan collateral requirement on the EIDL side. Uh, there'll be a UCC lien against assets of the business, but no lien against real estate owned by the guarantors of the loan on the EIDL side. There is a personal uh, guarantee requirement on EIDL loans, no personal guarantee requirement on, uh, on the Paycheck Protection Program. So how do I get loan forgiveness? Uh, to get loan forgiveness on the Paycheck Protection Program side, you have to apply for that loan forgiveness through your lender. So it's not automatic. Uh, in that uh, application, there's some documentation that you have to provide. Uh, I would discuss the, the documentation requirements with whoever you go through as a lender, but just some notes here, you know, you're just going to verify the number of, of employees you have. Basically, we're showing, hey, we, uh, we didn't let anybody go. We've retained the same number of employees that we had. Uh, if you don't retain them, it's not an all or nothing uh, sort of situation on the forgiveness. You know, it's prorated. So if you, if you went ahead and had to let someone go, that doesn't completely eliminate your ability to, to get some of the loan forgiveness. It would just be pro rata based on the, the number of employees that actually had been retained. So keep that in mind. 
Um, the amount of the forgiveness can be reduced. It's, it's reduced based on those failures to maintain the average number of full-time employees over that, uh, that February 15 to June 30, 2019 uh, information for, for companies that were in existence and operating at that point, or January 1 to February 29 of this year, um, if, if you were in operation at, the, at that point in the year. Um, so one other thing it's important to note, if we're looking at, you know, the, the ratio of payroll cost to, to other costs that's getting forgiven, the non-payroll costs uh, that you incur over that eight week, week period, uh, the way that, that it looks like it's lining out, it, those expenses can't be more than 25% of, of the forgiveness amount. So for ease of math, if we're thinking $100,000, in total loan forgiveness, 25,000 or less could be non-payroll expenses. Wanted to give you a few notes on, on the Paycheck Protection Program uh, from a loan documentation standpoint. So I really wanna emphasize the importance of, of jumping on this kind of right away. Uh, if we're thinking about the, the PPP loans and, and applying, I would consider making that your top priority right now uh, and jumping on, on a loan application process right away. The loan uh, applications will be accepted starting April 3rd, and more than likely from what, uh, from what we're seeing, there's going to be a really high demand for, for the loans, and the, the funding that's been available, uh, made available through Congress for the loans, uh, we don't anticipate that sticking around for very long. So we could see those dollars really be spoken for in, say, a 48-hour period. That, that's the assumption that I would make. So I would really work to get all your ducks in a row, everything lined up as quickly as you can and, and work with your lender to be able to have all that documentation ready to go so they can submit that loan on your behalf on April 3rd. Uh, just a few notes here on some of the information uh, that, that in the conversations that we've had with our clients and their lenders, some of the documentation that's uh, being requested, uh, just confirm that loan documentation before you go Put all of this information together just reach out to your lender and confirm that, that they're going to need the same information but just a few notes there on, on what our experiences has shown uh, that the information that lenders will uh, will need there um, again I would just really emphasize uh, the the priority of getting this done kind of right away uh, these, these dollars are likely to be spoken for pretty quickly Moving past the, the loan uh, availability, the uh, EIDL or the PPP, some other provisions for small businesses. Uh, on the business tax provisions, there are uh, a couple things to keep in mind, some employee uh, retention credits and deferral of payroll taxes. Keep in mind, if you go the PPP loan uh, route, if that's a loan that you apply for and get accepted for, you are not qualified for either the retention credits or for the payroll taxes. Um, so uh, bear that in mind whenever you're, you're considering your options here. Um, on the employee retention credit side, uh, if operations have been fully or partially suspended in, in the quarter due to a couple of things, due to an order by a governmental authority, so that, you know, a good example would be retail stores, clothing stores that have, you know, had to shut down uh, by governmental authority, you know, uh, the, the, the shelter in place, orders that have come through in, in a lot of different uh, local municipal or, or state authorities. Um, and then if your revenue is less than 50% for that quarter compared to the same quarter in 2019, you get a credit of 50% of wages paid up to $10,000 per employee if you have up to 100 employees. If you have over 100 employees, there's a, a different credit calculation that gets a little complex. Happy to discuss that with you offline if that would be helpful. On deferral of payroll taxes, same drill. You're not qualified for the deferral of payroll taxes if you have a PPP loan. Um, but uh, if, you, if you are eligible for the deferral of payroll taxes, you can defer payment uh, you know, of those payroll taxes for the employer share of the, the payroll tax. And you can do that uh, you know, for the remainder of, uh, you know, of 2020. The, the way that those taxes would be paid, you pay 50% of that payment uh, due by December 31st of next year, 2021. Uh, the remaining 50% uh, is, uh, is, is due December 31st of 2022. And uh, keep in mind, this also applies to self-employed individuals. So if you're self-employed, you, know, you, can, you can defer paying the employer side of those self-employment taxes 
and stretch those payments out over 2021, 2022 as a, a way to, to have a little bit more cash available there for you. Last thing I wanted to touch on are unemployment benefits. So uh, the way that this does impact uh, small business owners is self-employed individuals are now actually allowed to apply for unemployment benefits. Um, you know, normally you're ineligible for those uh, regular unemployment benefits, but now you are actually allowed to apply if you're self-employed. Uh, so that's a, that's a new provision, a new opportunity for, for, for some assistance. Um, just a handful of notes here. The payment on uh, those self-employment benefits are $600. They're increased by $600 a week up to four months under the CARES Act. Uh, the regular period of unemployment has been extended by 13 weeks. Uh, those payments will uh, generally start immediately. It takes about a week from the time that you apply to get those started. Uh, there have been some incentives for states to create some short-time compensation programs, and so that's going to be on a state-by-state -state basis, you know, according to, to what your particular state has decided to do. But those benefits, you know, you apply for those, uh, you know, through your uh, through your state government there. Hopefully this has been helpful in, in giving you some, uh, some perspective, some information for you as a small business owner on what's available to you through the CARES Act. Just to reemphasize, if you're going to apply for uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, I would encourage you to, to start that process immediately and get, uh, you know, get with your lender uh, and, and really work to, uh, to be lined up to apply first thing on April 3rd. Um, if you have any questions on anything we've discussed here today, or if we could be a sounding board for you during these really difficult times, we're happy to do that. So please uh, reach out to us directly here at Accenture. If you're already a client of Accenture, please reach out to your advisor. Uh, we're, we are, are all uh, up to speed on, on these small business provisions of the CARES Act and would be happy to help you navigate uh, these, uh, these difficult times. So anything we can do at all, we're happy to. Thanks so much and best wishes to you and to your family.